Miss Conway Muhe, what do you make of the rise of this far left candidate? Well, unfortunately, it's um, very much in line with this campaign, which uh, is unlike any other campaign I have known in the past. Um, so unpredictable. Uh, a lot of the electorate do not know who to vote for, which is an indication that none of the candidates really fulfill what they expect of a president. And a volatility, a volatility of uh, the uh, polls, which also show that um, it's like a race, except that it's not a horse race that mm. we're looking at. Uh, it's, uh, it's a presidential election, and uh, you see one running ahead and the other one being catch up, and that's the way it's being presented. But the issue is just far more um, serious for France, but for Europe and, and the rest of the world, that um, I think at this point um, everybody is um, kind of disturbed as to what is happening. Um, there hasn't been really um, uh, debates about the economic issues and so on, which means that in effect both the far right and the far left are capable of running forward because we have with Monsieur Mélenchon uh, an excellent speaker who is capable of um, you know, okay. uh, uh, bringing crowds together and so on. And um, it's most unfortunate there is no uh, debate Mr. On, on what they actually present in their yes. program. Mr. Sontag, therefore, what really matters in this election? Is it personality, speech style, or real policy? Yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, unfortunately what really matters is personality. The uh, electoral system in France uh, is uh, one where the winner takes all. Uh, and uh, the fact that the presidential elections uh, always come uh, before the legislative elections uh, excessively personalize uh, the whole thing. Uh, in addition, we have this year, uh, like the senator uh, just mentioned very correctly, we have a, a very strong fragmentation uh, of, of politics. We have uh, four candidates uh, that are running uh, very close to each other within the margin errors, uh, error margins of the polls yeah. uh, and uh, representing uh, for, for very different uh, movements uh, of, of thought. Uh, uh, almost all beyond the traditional range uh, of the, the old parties. But people are looking for change, isn't it, Mr. Sontag? So therefore, is this uh, interesting phenomenon, uh, could it be a boost for politics in France? Will people, as a result of that, care more about the issues as a result? Uh, I, I think uh, that uh, the French uh, uh, citizens, uh, first of all, uh, will uh, turn out uh, massively uh, at, at the voting. Uh, there is uh, no way it will go down to levels like we can witness in, in the United States. Um, uh, secondly, uh, French citizens are interested in the issues. Uh, mm. you, you can notice it uh, at, uh, at the different rallies, you can notice it in, in, in public debate. Uh, it's the system that pushes them towards um, personalizing things uh, and uh, their choice uh, for the presidency uh, is probably too much uh, motivated uh, by the, the issues of uh, personality, of charisma, right. or like the senator just said, uh, of uh, eloquence. Uh, and uh, when it comes to eloquence, uh, Monsieur Mélenchon uh, has a very good card to play, definitely. Uh, senator Conway Mouche, as a result, what do you think about this phenomenon? I mean, on the very far left and on the very far right, you both have candidates that are running as front runners. So does it mean the society is extremely divided or people just don't care what they say? Uh, what does it present to you, the current phenomenon? Oh, no, it's not that they don't care about what's being said. I think um, they want to break um, with um, what is upsetting them, uh, globalization and uh, uh, a future which is quite uncertain with just so many wars and um, political tensions in, in the world, not terrorism on French territory and so on. So um, people are, are, are quite upset and, and, and um, uh, maybe there's a certain amount of fear as well within French society since the terrorist attacks. And somebody like Marine Le Pen has uh, exploited that very well by saying, well, if we close our borders and we keep among ourselves, we will mm -hmm. be safe from the rest of the world, which, of course, is totally unrealistic and, and untrue. 
but uh, I think people are more emotional than being rational um, and that's the way they, rea they are reacting. Mm -hmm. um, and going to the far right or the far left is just saying, well, look, we will maybe try something that we haven't tried before, which hasn't really worked for us. And they are maybe prepared to, uh, to do it. But we will see in a week's time when the polls are, you know, are actually open and, and when people go out and vote, if really they translate these fears and mm. uh, this wish to, uh, this will to, to, to break up with the past into indeed uh, voting for one or the other extreme mm. because in effect that's what we have and then we have in the that's center right. of course uh, Monsieur, uh, Monsieur Macron. Less than two weeks to go, barely 10 days before the first round of voting on April the 23rd, the rise of a far-left candidate has turned the French presidential campaign into a four-horse ride. Let's take a look at some of the policies these candidates are looking at. On the top is far-right leader Marine Le Pen. Dubbed as the French Trump, she promised to withdraw from the EU with French first policies. Ms. Lupin is also a hardliner on immigration. She argues French citizenship should be either inherited or merited, and illegal immigrants have no reason to stay in France. Hot on her heels is independent centrist Emmanuel Macron, who has presented himself as both pro-European and pro-business, and a staunch supporter of migration. Coming out of left field is Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who pledges to jumpstart the French economy and to renegotiate European treaties. He also called for France to leave NATO. Center-right François Fillon remains a serious contender for the Élysée despite a financial scandal. He took a hard line against Islam and promised sweeping reforms to the Euro and the European Union. Well, we got to know the policies. And now, Mr. Tue, you see, Mr. Macron at the very beginning was this dark horse. Mm -hmm. After running for a while, he became one of the front runners, and now there's a Mr. Melanchon. So uh, what do you make of this one dark horse after another, it seems, particularly given the fact, the track record, mm -hmm. Mr. Melanchon, uh, years ago running for the candidate, but actually he only got maybe around 10% yeah. earlier. So now it's a very different picture. Yes. I think that if we look at it uh, uh, you know, carefully, I uh, this uh, French uh, uh, election, we can find even among those uh, four uh, uh, candidates, they are different. But we can find some uh, uh, you know common uh, commonalities uh, uh, among them. I think that shows that uh, from a society, from uh, French citizens, now there is a general feeling to change, mm. just like what happened for Mr. Macron and for Mr. Melanchon. Because both those two uh, person, we can find out these candidates, we can find out. Uh, they are very, very different from a traditional mainstream uh, political parties. Mm -hmm. So I think that now that's also the reason why you can find out that there is a natural difference bet uh, between those uh, candidates' uh, commitment. Mm -hmm. But uh, they want to try to show the different figures, different faces to the uh, 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 voters. And therefore, as a result, when it comes to faces, when it comes to voices, right. uh, will that be the characteristics of elections to come? at a time for dramatic change, that people mainly would only care about personalities, so-called the personal dramatic stories, right. and also the speaking styles and manners. Uh, are we entering into a very different political age these days? Will politicians, what they say, still matter anymore compared to how they look and what their personal stories, how colorful they are, mm -hmm. Mr. Trey. Yeah, I think now uh, we can find out it's a general trend, not only in uh, uh, French politics and also in some other Western, Euro uh, mm -hmm. Western uh, country politics, because of we can find out this, uh, how to say, the internet or a kind of uh, social media. Yeah, yeah, social media, and especially uh, we can say that now there is a very, very narrow gap or very difference between so-called democracy and the populist politics. Mm. Because now for more and more politicians, no matter it's from a far right or far left, always they want to take use of some uh, new media as a tool to get a kind of a director uh, exchange or interaction right. with uh, uh, people, with the citizens. Let's go to uh, Senator Conway Mouhe. I mean, you look at these candidates. They all quite colorful. Mr. Macron has his personal story with his teacher. Of course, his personal story got big. Uh, Mr. Le Pen, uh, being on the far right, 
has a very outrageous sometimes statements, got big on social media as well. Now Mr. Malencon from the far left, certainly a social media babe. So what do you think really now is the way people are looking at elections? Will they popular on social media and therefore they are holding the key to the presidential palace? Hmm. Well, you see, somehow the French election is not um, unlike the American election that took part. I mean, who thought <laughs> I do notice a long the French time ago that Mr. Trump from the Americans? Well, no, no, but hold on. Um, no, no, no. But what, what I want to say is that who thought initially when Mr. Trump um, started running that he would be the candidate chosen by the Republican Party and then actually win the election? Nobody really bet on him uh, two years back, and yet he's not the president. And what I want to say is that I think the, 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 the media and the social media play an incredible part now, where Mr. Trump indeed tweets all the time, even as a president, mm -hmm that he's kind of bypassing the official discussion, you know, like we have today, where you invite people who are experts in, in, in their field and right. uh, uh, discuss uh, matters and so on. And they are more superficial. They just um, want to retain out of a whole speech uh, the one sentence that is going to be problematic or the uh, one mistake that uh, the candidate will yeah. have made in the week. But one forgets that, that all the, the, the speeches and the meetings and so on that took place that were good, all of that is kind of sidelined and we concentrate on the tweet or the, um, the, uh, the expression or mm. the, you know, the little fight that took place and so on. Even in the political debate with the 11 candidates, what, was, uh, what, what came out in the social media? The one sentence from Mr. Poutou, who attacked Marine Le Pen, and the rest of the debate, the four-hour debate, was totally forgotten. People just rem <laughs> remember the, the, the one piece. And That's so, true. Yes, indeed. I think, I think it's a sign of our society now today where people maybe are more superficial. They don't want to be bothered with long speeches and having uh, to read programs and so on. And they just want to listen to somebody and say, uh -huh. well, I like him or I like her. That's right. And uh, I like the way they talk and, oh. and uh, simple oh. messages. What? And that's what? how Marine Le Pen <laughs> has gone so far about, because the extreme right is just like that. Yeah. What about Mr. Sontag? What do you think about this? Uh, can we compare the French election now? running up to the first round to what's going on in the U.S. presidential election. Trump, Bernie Sanders, can't hear? Well, let's come to you, Mr. Choi, here in Beijing. What about that? Is that comparison relative or not? Uh, Relevant or not? <laughs> yes, I think that uh, uh, indeed now, I, I think the question now for, for the uh, French election is, uh, because there's a very, very uh, small differences uh, among the uh, candidates on the commitment policy, so maybe it's a very, very uh, difficult question for the people, for the uh, citizens to choose. So also because now Fran uh, France is facing a so big uh, challenge, not only the economy and also the uh, terrorist attack and also the, uh, some others. So I think that now, uh, yes, for these uh, people, they have to do something, but uh, now they uh, lost, I would like to say, uh -huh. they lost a the direction. So. So far, still, there are more than uh, one-third people uh, in France not yet make a decision that uh, which one will be the, uh, you know, the, the, the support. Yeah. That's true. Well, we'll have to wait for them to go to the polls before we know the result because we have learned a lesson from the U.S. presidential right. election not right. to predict too early and not to trust the polls hundred <laughs> percent. But Senator Connie Mohe, I do want to ask you back about a point made by Mr. Tsui. Has democracy become populist politics these days? So are you asking me the question? That's right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Can you repeat it? Has democracy, as Mr. Tsui earlier suspected, become breeding yes. place for popular politics? Are they becoming ever more equal to one another in a way. Uh, mm. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, I think there are a lot of factors that are coming together. I think the digital age is changing the way people interact with one another. I mean, you know, you in the media see the uh, influence 
and the interaction of social medias mm. and, and tweets and, and so on that people you know communicate directly and so on. So I think it is um, a global change that we're changing because of the digital age and of course um, politics with politicians you know making promises and then not being able to deliver or not explaining properly to the people why they're not in capacity to deliver them. People then being uh, disappointed, you know, because uh, somehow in a political campaign a lot of hope is raised and then, you know, not met. So I think it's, it's, it's all of that. But in this election, if people took the time to look at the programs, mm. those candidates are just so different from one another. And you, you go actually from the extreme right to the extreme left, uh, you know, going through the center and Monsieur Fillon uh, being on the right as well. So um, there is a real choice, but people are not into that. They, they, you know, they, 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 maybe they are bombarded as well with too, many, uh, too much information. Yeah. Uh, too, too, too much, much of everything. And too, too that's much why information. they're undecided. Because yeah. in effect, in, yeah, and in effect, they could well, this time round, have a real choice and say, well, I can go from one extreme to the other. I mean, the, the whole panel is there. So and yet they're the undecided whole, because the whole they're panel afraid is of there. the extremes and, and they're, they're disappointed with the center. You know, that, that's, that, the problem. that's true. So, Mr. Sontag, the most important thing are some of the key issues. For example, on the Syria issue and on France's position in the European continent, for example. And another thing, France relations with Russia. And also, what about the future of the European Union? Among all of these topics, do you think which one the voters are really eventually nail themselves, their attentions on? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm afraid I, I didn't fully understand the last five minutes of the of the debate, but I'm happy to reply to to your question. Uh, I think uh, that the French uh, election this year uh, is extremely closely followed in uh, its neighboring countries uh, within the European Union. It's a phenomenon that, that we have already witnessed uh, with the Brexit debate, with the recent elections in Austria and in the Netherlands, that uh, the mutual interest between uh, European member states on what is happening elsewhere um, has uh, grown uh, tremendously, I would say, over, over the last years, mm. which shows or which reflects the, the stronger interdependence that we are having within the European Union. I think the European Union is not dead and uh, uh, it won't uh, uh, die uh, because of the result of the presidential election in France. We should not forget that there are these parliamentary elections uh, afterwards mm. and the newly elected president will hardly be able to do half of what he or she has been promising over the last weeks. So, uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, there will be uh, a very un-French exercise in, in coalition building uh, uh, once right. we have had the uh, parliamentary elections in June. Uh, and, and that means uh, that uh, some compromise will have to be found on issues uh, pertaining to international relations I too, see. whether it's the sanctions uh, against Russia. Uh, the sanctions against Russia are not French sanctions, they are Western sanctions. Okay. They, are, uh, they have to be uh, uh, coordinated uh, with, with, with the Allies. So uh, there is no risk uh, that uh, the new president will uh, go on his or her own uh, right after being elected. Uh, he or she will have a very hard time doing one, this. One might argue that way, but also you see the American politics being played up recently. What does that mean for a country's decision-making process and eventual capabilities of making important decisions? It's also an interesting thing. So, Mr. Tsui, uh, what about that? I mean, among all of these candidates, uh, their issues, will this so-called system eventually be able to rein in some of the extremes? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think now, uh, just like uh, uh, so many uh, experts, especially from European countries, from France, they are a little bit uh, more uh, optimistic about this uh, system of uh, you know, election in uh, France because it's uh, different from the uh, uh, American one. Is there are two, two wrong uh, system. Mm. So perhaps that, uh, uh, yes, maybe also another uh, reason for this uh, optimistic viewpoint is uh, French people, there will be uh, another chance for French people to have a more rational choice 
of the first well, round. Well, you could argue about that, but yeah. earlier there have been points being made, Mr. Tui, that, well, maybe this election is not going to be necessarily that important in terms of what other countries might take uh, uh, their future when it comes to politics. But people are suggesting, you know, election in France, an election in Italy, and also later in Germany, these are all extremely important elections. So if this goes quite dramatic, shall we put it, to use that word, what would this mean for the rest of the European countries, particularly the upcoming Germany election? Yes. I think firstly, uh, if we look at this uh, impact from the uh, French election on the uh, other European countries, firstly, that uh, because now, as we know, France as a is a very, very important or co-member state of the European Union. Mm -hmm. And of course, European integration, especially the direction of the integration, become a very, very hot issue for this election. So certainly, the result of the election will give a very, very big impact on this uh, European integration itself. Mm -hmm. And secondly, as we know, that uh, once, once something happened, especially unexpected uh, happened, for mm -hmm. example, uh, Marianne Pong, elected as the president, it will give, uh, I mean, another very, very big, uh, you know, shock to Europe after the Brexit, uh -huh. after the election of Mr. Trump in the United States. So I don't know if it's uh, okay still, I mean, for European countries, for European Union to stand up to this uh, one by one attacks. I see. Mm. Well, Ms. conway Bonhe, I'm sure you have your views on that as well. Yes, um, I, I think that um, unfortunately um, some of the candidates that could be elected in, in 10 days time are uh, basically anti-European and um, have very clear um, measures in their program uh, to uh, take France out of the European Union in the same manner as um, the Brexit has happened and that it will be detrimental for uh, the Union because France with Germany uh, now are the two biggest countries and the founding fathers of, of, you know, of, of this union. So I, I think the impact goes far beyond just the election in France because um, of course they will be, uh, the French will have to cope with the economic programs and so on of the, 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 the new president. Mm. But it's the rest of Europe and therefore the rest of the world because at the moment one should remember that uh, the European Union is um, uh, playing an important role in the peacekeeping in the world and in the peace negotiations and so on. And if the European Union applies sanctions, uh, it is just to put pressure on Russia, to name it, mm. um, about what's happening in, in the Ukraine, for instance. So, um, you know, uh, what strikes me at the moment, I travel a lot. Um, that's my job as a senator to represent the French abroad and being in the, attached to the Foreign Affairs Committee. Right. And all the people I meet, being ministers, uh, president of the Foreign Affairs Committees, uh, of the, uh, the Senate and so on in other countries, every single one of them has a question. Is Marine Le Pen capable of winning the election? Mm. And what strikes me is that people are more worried than the French are at the moment, which is something quite stunning, really, when you think about it. Mm. What do you make of uh, Mr. Sontag uh, of that uh, specific uh, phenomenon that people, it seems, outside France are more concerned about one candidate than many of the French uh, uh, do? Yeah, well, it, it seems that uh, many people outside the United States of America were more worried about what was happening uh, over there than the Americans themselves. Uh, so you, you can dress up a parallel uh, if you like. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think, uh, I, I want to uh, maybe uh, come back again to the question of, of what that means uh, for Europe. Uh, I, I feel like de-dramatizing uh, a little bit. Uh, even if Marine Le Pen, which, which I don't believe, um, uh, would uh, win the, the election uh, in, in the second round, um, I, I don't think she would have a, a large majority mm. in France that would allow her actually uh, to push uh, her agenda of uh, leaving the European Union. Uh, uh, the French don't even want to leave the euro. I mean, the polls are extremely clear on, on, on that issue. It's not a topic with which you can actually win the election. 
Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I feel like uh, uh, calming things down uh, a little bit uh, and, uh, and not uh, dramatizing too much into this uh, presidential election, right. uh, which, as I said, will be followed by, by other elections and, and we will see what, what happens then. We will go a little bit into the unknown this year, very clearly, uh, but, uh, but uh, I, I don't think we are heading for, for, for tragedy or chaos. But what about uh, uh, Senator Conway Moche? the capabilities of these candidates vis-a-vis -vis their popularities these days. Among the four front runners, only one, Mr. Fi Yong, seemed to have rich experience in politics and in governing. The other three, all three front runners right now, are not. So what would that mean for the power and capacity of a president in the future in your national politics? Uh, just before I answer this question, I'm, I'm not dramatizing the, 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 that France you know, uh, would come out immediately <laughs> of the European Union and so on. However, uh, one has to remember that in 2005, mm -hmm. France mm -hmm. voted no. And what Marine Le Pen has indicated is that she will not do it uh, as a president. She will put it to referendum. And every time a referendum is called or has been called in the past few years, the answer has always been a rejection of um, you know, what was proposed and, and the Brexit is, is the last one that nobody believed that the UK indeed was going to vote to get out and, and they did. So France did vote no in 2005 and while they are okay. against you know, leaving the euro and so on, there is this possibility once a referendum is called. But as for Monsieur okay. Fillon, mm -hmm. one has to um, understand that um, it, it's not his experience. I mean, for, for the past few uh, weeks, he has been enrolled in uh, one uh, affair after the other, yeah. financial affairs and so on. And his credibility is totally destroyed today. And what we have at 17 percent or 18 percent is just people who belong to the party and whoever the candidate uh, would be for that party, they will vote for him. But unfortunately, he has disappointed everybody else I who see. may have voted for his program or the right. So it's, it's really the financial um, affairs that he has, uh, you know, we have been dealing yeah. with that has uh, destroyed that, his reputation. That, that Plus the fact, uh, to come back to the one point that I made, that people <laughs> want to break with the past. Yes, and that's true. That's you said that earlier already. But so now want I want to go to, go to Mr. Yes. Tui. What about yes. that phenomenon? Yes, even though Mr. Fi Yong had his own problems, but it doesn't mean the other three candidates would immediately gain political capacity mm -hmm. compared to what they had with the other candidates. So uh, what does that mean? Once again, my question is, Mr. Tui, for the power and the capacity of a future president in France, not, probably not just in that country and also in others' national politics. Yeah, just like I mentioned before, that uh, now uh, most of uh, French people they want to change, have a huge change for this uh, French politics, French economy, everything. I think that uh, in another world, uh, the people want to have a change uh, eagerly, which means that uh, uh, they, they, they are so big on satisfaction from a French citizen on uh, current you know, uh, mainstream uh, uh, politics, especially our parties like uh, Central left, central right. So I think maybe uh, for them that okay, maybe Mr. Fillon will be a very, very ideal choice before there are some uh, you know problem with with him. Mm. But so far, of course, uh, besides Mr. Fillon, and uh, perhaps they prefer to. I mean, those people, French, they prefer to uh, choose a totally new politician without any experience. I think it's a shows, it's a it's a showcase mm. a very very, I mean, deep. A problem or bigger problem for this uh, politics in France. Well, you certainly could choose a new politician that's very fresh on the stage, but on the other hand, that learning curve can be very long. And therefore, Mr. Sontag, all our national politics, regional politics, international politics these days have to endure all of these huge learning curves by fresh candidates now on the horizon. Uh, I personally, I wouldn't be uh, afraid uh, of having a, a fresh new face, uh, for instance, uh, Monsieur Macron uh, at the head of the Republic. 
uh, it, it depends uh, on, on the team with which he is surrounded. And I think uh, uh, the speed with which he has set up uh, his movement and developed it, and the speed with which he has become uh, a popular politician in France, uh, shows that a steep learning curve is not something that would intimidate him. Uh, so uh, I'm relatively uh, relaxed also uh, about this issue of uh, relative inexperience uh, in, in government. Uh, and and I, uh, it, it is characteristic even uh, that uh, Monsieur Macron uh, tries very hard uh, not uh, to be linked uh, to uh, the, the government which he was a part of. And that Monsieur Fillon is not exactly uh, promoting uh, his previous uh, five years uh, as prime minister under under. Nicolas Sarkozy, but wants to present himself as a new alternative. So uh, I don't think that the capacity of governing is, is, is the, main, uh, the main issue. Uh, it, uh, it will be the capacity of setting up a government that has a parliamentary majority uh -huh. and can actually pass legislation. That will be the main task and, and uh, we will see whether uh, the, the winner will actually grow uh, with his new mission. Mm. What do you think, uh, uh, Senator Conway Muhe, about that political capacity vis-a-vis -vis governing capabilities? Yes, even though the president of France is possibly the, the president in the world that has uh, most powers, um, Indeed, he has a team around him, and the first thing that uh, he does out of the um, majority that comes out in the in Parliament is to have a government and nominate a prime minister and and, and have a team uh, to work with and implement uh, the promises and, and and the program that he presented and that mm. people accepted. So um, it's not it's not a lone uh, run really. Uh, it may be a lone run up to mm. being elected. And after, indeed, it is very much kind of a, a, a collective, um, uh, you know, uh, work that, yeah. that counts. That is true. And final words from you, Mr. Tsui? Yes, I think that it, now it looks like uh, French people and the politicians, they do have, uh, you know, so huge, uh, you know, confidence on the uh, own, you know, bureau bureaucratic system. Even perhaps the uh, very, very uh, young or new politicians will be elected mm -hmm. as a president.